So in uh, this video or a couple videos, hopefully I can put it all into one video here if I condense it. Uh, we're going to be setting up a uh, bio digester here. Um, I do have some interesting things I'm going to incorporate um, in order to make this bio digester as efficient as possible. Uh, so what you guys see here is just a basic um, frame that was leveled off with some concrete pins. Uh, I backfilled it with um, dirt, obviously. And I went ahead and um, put water on it compact and put more dirt compact, more water, and just over and over and over and over um, to help compact the dirt. So the dirt is extremely compacted down. Um, we're not trying to grow anything in here. This is where the bow digester is going to sit. All right, guys. So, uh, we went ahead and packed dirt all the way around the frame to help support it so that way it doesn't blow out this is compacted it's been wetted we've stomped on it and everything else also use the skidster to drive on it and kind of make a ramp right here so we can walk up to it i'm gonna have to add more dirt so it's not so sharp of a walk up to feed the bio digester we just got done assembling the heat exchanger um, for the um in floor heating so normally this is for going into a concrete slab for your house um, but we're using it on the bow digester to heat from the bottom up because as we know heat will rise and so i'm going to use the theory of um, in-floor heating for the bow digester i've never seen anyone do this now this is pex radiant um floor tubing okay this is there's regular pex and then there's the radiant floor this one has the oxygen barrier on it uh, so i created my own grid that it fit underneath we're going to go ahead and stretch it out a little bit more and then we're going to go ahead and lay the bio gas bag on top of it open it up and start um, assembling the bio gas bag now i want to show something here when we assembled this i assembled this upside down on purpose that way when i flipped it over nothing sharp none of the crimps would be sticking up so they're all sticking down but what i'm also going to do is i have some old straps um ratchet straps wide about, maybe about three inches wide and I'm gonna attach it to the wood frame here, come across the, all the joints, come across here and make it tight. So that way the strap is now also covering all these joints. So it's gonna be nice and soft. Uh, and then as the water fills in this, um, some of the tubing will be pressed into the dirt and some won't. Um, so I'm assuming probably about half of the tubing um, should sink into the dirt. Uh, and then the other half will be touching the bag but the the ground the earth will also work as a um uh to help maintain that heat um while it's you know coming up so yeah i have my ins and outs i'm just running out to the air um you know i cut them long that way i have room to install the solar hot water heating panel that's how we're going to heat this so something something similar to how my house gets free hot water daily these are uh, solar hot water heating panels where water actually rolls through them. Um, it's temperature controlled and I have a pump that turns on and off to pump the hot water into the tank. So I'm going to use the same theory on this where it's just basically going to have a one solar hot water heating panel and a circulation pump. No tank. No tank needed. Because we want to dissipate as much heat through this grid as possible. So once I put the biogas bag on here and open it up and start filling it up, we'll never see this part again. This would completely disappear. All right, guys, so our heating grid is underneath the bio digester. Um, I use straps, um, two um, straps to go over all the joints. Um, that way there's nothing sharp sticking up. But we also made sure that all the crimps are sticking down. Uh, then we also put microfiber um, hand towels on some of the areas um, that way we can protect it so there's nothing sharp sticking up on the bottom of this bag um, it's pretty much um, halfway or a little bit more than halfway assembled we have it on road this is the home biogas 7 system which is the biggest system they sell um, if I remember correctly, I think the digester itself holds about anywhere between 11 to 1200 gallons of mass of water or whatever you're pour, pour, you know, putting into it. Um, right now we do have the water hose running and it is filling it up. Uh, here's the chute that you're going to be feeding from right here. And here's the output right here. 
So obviously when the, 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 the more full this gets, it's gonna expand out more, but we have more than enough room to expand wherever it has to go. And it's also centered in the uh, middle of the platform itself. So yeah, it's definitely filling. And as it fills out, it's gonna stretch out more and then push weight down onto those coils, the heating coils, and help push them into the dirt some. And then some's not, like I would say about half of it may be pushed into the dirt and then the other half will be um, touching the bag, which is gonna be great. So, yep, we're just waiting for it to fill now. All right guys, we're back a couple of hours later. Um, we are filling the biogas digester bag. Um, we also started putting the fence in already. Uh, we have some stuff we need to clear out of here. Um, some boxes and I have a carport that's in all this pallet I need to move out of here. I'm going to put a four foot gate right here so we can walk in. So you guys can see we have fence laying down right here. So this section right here needs to be finished. Um, but we put fence all the way up, all the way around, all the way next to the house, chain link fence. Um, just good enough, you know, it's nothing, nothing for sure or anything, just to keep the animals away. Um, now the other thing is, I'm about to go and um, pick up the, I actually have the solar hot water heating panel under my house. I'm going to start my skid stir up, uh, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to actually just remove like you know remove this section of fence out of the way so I can drive in with the skidster and I'm gonna set the um, solar hot water heating panel right here that way I can kind of get an idea of how big it is and you know how, you know what I want to do as far as building a frame to support it because it does get windy so I'll give you guys an example my solar hot water heating for my house these poles actually go in the ground six feet minimum um, and even these poles over here for my solar hot water I mean my electric um, solar um, those go in the ground at least um six feet or more so um we're gonna put one panel here then i can route my pipes to the solar hot water heating panel i have a circulation pump that's going to go there and i'm also going to put a t where i can fill it up so i'm going to fill it up let it purge all the air out of the line all of it all out then i can just shut that valve off and then that way i know for sure the line is filled with water uh, and then from time to time all i have to do is just open that valve up if it does purge any water out from the pressure relief valve i can open it up and uh, allow more water to go back into it no problem um so we're going to get ready to do that but yeah i'm pretty happy that we have fence around here now now um on this side here so here's the output of the biogas digester. Uh, we're gonna use this as fertilizer for plants. So we're gonna use this whole area right here. We're gonna clean it all up and we're gonna make raised beds. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and put some, um, you know, grow some vegetables and whatever we, we want. It's all convenient. Everything's gonna be downhill to the plants. So it's gonna be easy to uh, manage and deal with. So I gotta clean up my mess, lots of mess. But we're getting there. So here's the bag. It is filling. I have the input all put together here. This is where you put all the food. So once the bag is completely filled, this will sit up, right? Um, obviously this bag has a lot more to fill up. I would say we're almost halfway full on the bag. Yeah, maybe almost, nah, not even. Well, nah, maybe between quarter and halfway full. Uh, then I do need to put about 80 gallons of cow manure in here because this is a very big bow digester. So 80 gallons of fresh cow manure uh, mixed with water, a slurry to go in here like any other bow digester. And after that, we're just going to top it off with water until we see um, water coming out the output in. And then we know for sure that the bag is 100% full. Um, and then from there, we're just going to let it sit my goal is to get this bag filled up all the way and get the manure in it so we can start getting that going uh, and then also get the solar hot water heating panel installed so i'm hoping by tomorrow afternoon i'll have the solar hot water heating panel installed with the circulation pump um, ready to go and start moving water already to start heating this up uh, and then we can um you know just tidy up the loose ends here all right guys quick uh, quick update I uh, went ahead and found an old um, walkway gate that I had under my house. Um, <laughs> so at least I didn't have to buy one. 
Still got to make a latch for this thing, but a zip tie will work for now. So at least now it's fenced off. As you guys can see, we have the cattle in the back right there. They're roaming around right now. So now they can't come in here and destroy anything. Uh, the biogas bag is... I haven't let the water run all day. I've just been letting it run from time to time. I would say it's about halfway full now. Um, yeah, it's about halfway full. All right, guys, welcome back. It is tomorrow, and uh, we got some progress here. We just got done putting this together. Uh, we built the frame to hold the solar hot water heating panel. Uh, these pipes are driven in the ground about three foot, maybe three or four foot. Uh, then I made a crossbar, welded it all up to support the panel. Uh, we have it at an angle, and it is level. Um, I do need to clean the panel. It's dirty, as you guys can see right here. It's really dirty. Um, but I did flush the panel out. I put the water holes on this end, flushed stuff out that way, and then I let the water come back out and flush out this way and had some dirt because we have a lot of dust and dirt around. So a lot of that stuff got flushed out. And literally, guys, if I touch this pour here, it is extremely hot, like real hot. And that's with the panel not even being um, cleaned yet. So this is where it's going to sit. Uh, so now the game plan for heating this biodigester is pretty straightforward, but a little complex. So this is my output right here. So I'm going to fix this connection up and all that. We're going to come down to an elbow and it's going to go right to the heat exchanger, the radiant heat flooring that I put underneath here, the tubing. Um, that's going to go in here and that's going to go ahead and start heating this biodigester. And then this is going to soak up a lot of that heat as it gets through that exchanger that I made. And then it's going to come out a lot colder um, than it went in. It's going to come through this pipe. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to put a circulation pump, which I already have on hand. Um, the circulation pump, I'm actually going to turn it down to its lowest setting. Uh, and then that's going to get piped in. We're going to have electrical out here. Then I'm also putting a temperature sensor here. Just like I have one up there on my other system. That way when this gets to a certain temperature right here, uh, I can automatically have the pump turn on or off depending on the set temperatures I set. Because I do not want the water continuously rolling through here unless it's um, all warm or up to that same temperature already, right? Um, so if the water is too cold to be pushed through the heat exchanger underneath this bag, this biodigester, then I don't want to do that because I'll, I'll be cooling it off, right? So only when it hits a certain temperature will the pump turn on over here, pump water through, come down and go through the exchanger. And then once it hits a set point on the low side, it'll shut off. And it's going to wait for the temperature to raise back up to that set point and trigger back on and cycle again and vice versa all day long. Now, at some point, the water that's coming out of this system will start, you know, it's going to start slowly all warming up together. Um, and then at that point, um, it's just going to be able to just let it run um, if we can get it to that temperature, you know, where it's more, um, let's say I set it for 95 degrees and finally it's been running for hours and hours and hours. And then finally now all the water, even the water coming out of the exchanger is still right around 95 degrees, then the system will stay on and just keep pumping water around and around and around. Now, if the temperature rises too high, uh, we do have pressure relief valves here. So there's actually two, one here and one here. Um, so we do have two safety um, pressure relief valves. So if it, it get the pressure gets too hot in here, uh, it'll automatically pop open and relieve that pressure for us and it's shooting all the water away from the bow digester and everything else. So we do have that there. Um, I'm going to be using a temperature controller with the sensor that I have like on this system here. And um, that's what's going to be controlling everything where I'm going to set the set points for the, um, you know, the cold, the cold limit, the hot limit um, and so forth. So I'm going to run conduit out here to run the low voltage wire sensor. Uh, I'm going to bring an extension cord out and um, eventually put that in a piece of conduit as well to power the pump that I'm putting over here. And then that's it. The system can run basically the same as that system. It's identical, except this system has a water tank connected to it for my, for my home. This one will not have a water tank. It doesn't need it. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. 
All right, guys, so the biogas digester is almost completely full now. Um, I was able to put in 80 gallons of uh, cow manure to get the process started. So right now I'm just putting in the last bits of um, water to get it completely topped off. So the inlet right here and the outlet right here. Uh, it took me a couple of days uh, to go around the ranch to get 80 gallons just because I was using my... Um, my newer truck and my ranch truck is um, down right now so i was just driving along the driveway and the roads that we have here where the cattle were at and scooping up what i could when i could so it took a couple days to fill it up with 80 gallons this digester the bottom part of this digester holds 1136 gallons okay and it's almost it's about 13 between 13 and 14 feet long um just a hair over 13 feet long so I'm just waiting for the water to come up to the level right here and start coming off the tube. Once it comes off the tube, I can turn off the water and the system is done and complete. All we have to do is just basically wait for um, the microorganisms to multiply, um, start building their colonies. And then from there, um, we wait for the first production of gas. Sorry, it's really windy, guys. Um, the first production of gas is usually just CO2. So we'll bleed that off. Uh, and then we'll let it fill up again and then that should be our burnable gas already once we have burnable gas then we're ready to start using it in the house now this top part that you guys see here is actually pockets it's a big storage bag it's 660 um is it six, i think it's 660 gallons of store of gas storage on top so it's deflated right now obviously but there's also pockets all on the top of this bag to hold sandbags so i left a sandbag out to kind of show you guys what you know what we're dealing with here so there's a bunch of these sandbags stuffed in all the pockets and this is what creates the down pressure on the gas tank itself the storage bag to to push the pressure down the line to your stove or to whatever you're using it for yeah we're almost full guys we're getting there it's going to be the first time we're going to have a little bit of fluid coming out now you guys might be wondering what is this pipe right here um so i actually inserted a um, hot water heating element into the biogas digester because it's really windy out here and it's really it's pretty cold and so the wind is blowing onto the bag and cooling it off you know so until i can build the greenhouse that needs to go over this i'm going to be using a heater element to keep to keep the temperature at a more constant temperature that way we can you know start producing gas and start working with the system already yeah we're about right here right now Normally this would not be in here. This would be out and then you just have the cover right here that covers up all of that and you wouldn't even see it. I have a um, Sonoff TH16 um, temperature sensor in the biogas digester. So the sensor is inside the digester. So I can read the temperature of this biogas digester at any time from my phone. Uh, so that's really nice. Just It's like the same thing I have for my solar hot water heating system, my hot water heating tanks. I have all these sensors. Um, so I can read the temperature and monitor the temperature over time. So yesterday we were about 80 degrees and overnight until um, this morning it dropped down to 68 degrees and then we're starting to warm back up again. And most, mostly it's because the wind, the cold wind is blowing onto this. I mean if I was to walk out over here guys it's going to be terrible. I mean I hope you guys can hear me because it's kind of really windy. So it's cooling down the bag right? So that's my nemesis right now. Yep, we're almost there, guys. <coughs> um, this whole top will inflate to a big bag once it's completely um, full and inflated with biogas. There's a biogas filter in here um, that filters out the, um, the things that we don't want um, going through our gas line. <coughs> and then here's the actual gas line itself. So I do need to hook this up. Um, I ran electrical out here. I have um, outdoor rated waterproof plugs. One over there for the circulation pump for the solar hot water heating for the grid for the radiant floor heating. I also have another one here. Once I get a greenhouse over this, um, you know, this bottle gas digester, I'm going to be removing the heater element, this heater element out of here. This is only to supplement to kind of uh, make up for the wind blowing onto this bag and cooling it off. Yesterday we had a really good day as far as sun is concerned. It was really sunny, really hot, and we was able to get this thing going. It was it was doing good. So, um, but today, as you guys can see, it's completely overcast and it's windy and it's 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 chilly for sure. We're almost there. 
Um, so this biogas digester here, like I said, guys, I'm not advertising for this company at all. Not at all. We're going to see how well this system works. But this is the biggest system they sell. So this is um, Home Biogas um, 7. 